Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True Nerd, and welcome back to Stellaris Megacorp. Where last time we decided that we love the worm just as much as the worm loves us, which may have led to a slight case of our sun being converted into a weird sort of glowy black hole thing and every single planet in our home system exploding and ending up being turned into some form of either gas giant, don't worry, the gas giant's got away with it. Yeah, some form of nightmarish tomb world where the past and the future seem to have like collided into each other. And as a result of that, worlds that have never had any form of habitation on them suddenly are covered in bomb craters and city ruins and basically time's gone a bit on the screwy side. But on the plus side, I am actually now well suited to living on tomb worlds. Everyone who lives on this world now just like, you know, enjoys living on a tomb world, which is flipping great because my home system is full of tomb worlds. And that, that opens up all sorts of interesting possibilities. But first, first there's something we need to talk about because uh, this has been a really interesting topic of discussion in the comments about this series. So let's have a quick chat about Empire Sprawl and the admin cap, because some people seem to be of the view that I'm way too far over the admin cap, my Empire Sprawl's got out of hand, and this is fundamentally bad, especially with the additional 50% Empire Sprawl penalties that the corporate empires have. And I'm not really sure that's true. I mean, this is a little bit on the confusing side because it's not supposed to be a hard cap. It's a soft cap. Stellaris have even gone so far as to actually say on their official Twitter account, you are supposed to be going over this. I think its function is really just to stop snowballing. So if you take too much territory too quickly, you've got to stop, slow down, and actually invest in the territory you're taking over to stop those penalties getting out of hand. It's just supposed to slow you down. It's not supposed to be dictating the maximum size of your empire where you say, okay, I don't go over this limit because at this point any further expansion would hurt me more than it helps me. It would do in certain circumstances like large parts of largely empty space if you're just taking over systems for the sake of it. Absolutely there but I'm not sure I'm really falling into that. And if we just look at the penalties honestly things like leader cost it's up to like 500 for me but leaders live longer and longer as the game goes by honestly even at like 500 leader you're not replacing them that often that's not a big deal leader upkeep plus 200 percent i think my leaders are yeah my leaders cost 90 energy every month out of a total consumption of energy of 2,300 and a gain of 2,800. So that's absolutely insignificant. Campaigns don't really matter either. And as for tradition and technology, you can just kind of offset that by when you take over more planets by expanding more, make sure you invest in research and unity giving buildings. I honestly don't really see it as a situation where as a megacorp, you don't want to be playing at least a little bit on the wide side. Like I'm still playing a lot smaller than I would do otherwise. I think the Empire Sprawl penalty for corporate isn't really designed to say, just play tall, stay inside your admin cap. It's instead supposed to just try and nudge you into going for branch officers and giving them a look because they're kind of cool and fun. I don't think, even for megacorps, you're supposed to treat the admin cap as in any way anything close to a cap that you should worry about being over. Like, honestly, I think you can just work around it. I don't think that's the case at all. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I will meet you halfway on this one because I would like to play with the vassalization button. So if we just go over to, uh, yeah, planets and sectors right now, I can, if I want to, just basically take any individual sector and turn it into its own little mini empire. Basically the same as the Ganvius, the same as the Zikmok, the same as the Valdari, all of that business. I can just basically create a vassal. So today, I would actually like to do that. But the thing is, you've got to pick your vassals carefully because if your vassal is desperately specialized, then you might end up basically immediately having them run into trouble. So say foundation, obviously I'd never turn foundation into a vassal because I want to keep the beast. The beast is amazing, but foundation has food of minus 158. So unless the AI is very clever at buying food and honestly never trust the sector AI in this game, never trust sector AI. Yeah, there's a very real risk that they will immediately starve to death, just like the original Fenza Barnes did. So instead, I've got something else in mind, which is, honestly, is it right and proper that Cornwall is just a sector inside our empire? No. Cornwall, 100%, should be a mighty independent empire in its own right. So today, I would like to start making some preparations to potentially free Cornwall. They're still going to work for me, but I think those guys have a right to manage themselves. So, go into the sector map here, 
This will be the empire that I presumably am about to create. Now, a couple of small things, unfortunately, which is, uh, yeah, we're actually going to lose the curator order. We're already maxed out relations with them and we can still talk to them, even if they're not in our own personal empire anymore. So that's not really a big deal. We will lose Valus, which is a shame, and you've got no way of adding or taking out systems from a sector. So, like, in a perfect world, I'd probably say, you know what, give back Valus, but I'll give you a little bit more stuff down here to compensate. But no, sadly, I can't actually do that, so we will be losing Valus. And Valus is, yeah, for the most part, it's purely anchorages and one shipyard. But that's okay, when we give it away, we can just build a new station. It's far from irreplaceable, it's not even that strategically important, to be honest, because it's not at the border of the Empire. It is potentially a choke put in future, but it's not armoured, it's not particularly hardened, so it just doesn't matter. If we have to build another one, that's all absolutely fine. So what we will instead be losing is Cornwall and Glacier. Now overall, Cornwall is contributing food to the Empire, it's making a surplus of 151. But, we're up to plus 145, we're literally capped out on food right now, which is marvellous, and I believe over on Verlqualid, yeah, we were about to, yeah, that sinkhole's about to be cleared out. So, that's going to be another three agricultural spots available over on Verlqualid, and as people have been pointing out, there's nothing to really build on the beast, so... I could just put down a couple of hydroponics farms there as well, together with presumably... Can I actually put down more and more strongholds? I'd like to put down more strongholds if you want. Yeah, I could just put down more strongholds, have more soldiers, and those soldiers generate more fleet cap. So that's probably not a bad thing to do either. Just some strongholds and some farms there, spot on. The only problem that Cornwall does have... And by the way, yeah, the reason it's actually making energy is because Glacier will be in that number as well. Yeah. It doesn't really have much in the way of generator districts, but 65 is not much, because, like, a single technician job generates, like, 7 or 8 or something, and each generator district is 2 jobs, so that's about 15 total. So if I just throw down a handful of generator districts across Glacier and Cornwall, that place should actually shake out nicely. It's got enough consumer goods to cover itself, it's got enough food, it's got enough minerals. Uh, yeah, if we just basically throw down a few bits and pieces here, and there's totally space on Cornwall for us to do that, let's actually just get that in straight away. So that's generated districts times two, four jobs, marvellous. Now, just to make sure Cornwall's safe when I'm no longer running it, by the way, yeah, we've got a corrupt guy running the place right now, stupid Basil Bloom. So let's just quickly slap down a precinct house there as well, and we may as well slap down energy grid. Why not? Let's just actually boost the amount of energy we're getting out of this place. And just to make sure housing is covered, yeah, one more city as well, just to make sure that's queued up and ready to go. Meanwhile, over on Glacier, what are you guys doing right now? Ah, yes. The problem with Glacier is it's not actually that big. So I can't put that much stuff in play here. Probably best we do actually put down one district here of Generator. Do I actually need another actual city on Glacier? I mean, Glacier could just be a small place. It doesn't have to be that big. You know what? I'll put down a second Generator district and then I'll put down a city. Spot on. So that can all happen by itself. So we're just building over there. And once that's done, maybe we'll just ship some extra people from Asprania or somewhere over there just to make sure the place is nice and settled. And then we'll probably be ready to free those guys. And by the way, I have already checked. There are ultimate owls on other planets other than Cornwall. So we are not actually giving away the entire species to this brand new empire over here. Spot on, flipping marvellous. Oh, also something else I've actually noticed over here. Something a bit unfortunate, actually. So, the caravanners who are floating over here in Chaw's Compass, who have got, yeah, all this kind of cool new content in Megacorp, they're not willing to speak to me, because officially they're alpha aliens, but if I go to my situation log, there's no ability for me to actually translate the alpha alien language, so I'm kind of hoping they choose to reach out to me at some point, because right now I'm physically incapable of communicating with them, which is a bit of a shame. Also, I didn't notice this. Osprani has just sort of gained a whole bunch of new planetary features and blockers. All right, then. I mean, I guess they had to be reshuffled because, yeah, there can no longer be green fields or whatever. So now there's, like, fungal caves or whatever. So I'm not sure if potentially some of my old jobs have actually been destroyed or something. I've no bloody clue. Ah, this is very interesting. So right now I'm on minus three districts because the planet size is 20. Boosted to 21 by the completion of the expansion tree, but then reduced by 8 by 3 different sets of new planetary features, like dangerous wildlife. What's the wildlife? 
I feel like this is an important thing we're just ignoring, but okay. And city ruins and all sorts of stuff. Alright, fine. Let's just clear all these guys out nice and quick. I will need to do impassable mountains as well. Yeah, okay. Well, this is all fascinating. And another reason I'm happy for Cornwall to go, by the way, is Glacier, as a mining world, was always a bit of a compromise. It was never a great one. But the brand new Tomb World Center here in Ospra has actually got some wonderful mining worlds on it. In particular, it is... Uh, yeah. Dracu. Which right here has got 23 spaces. And just look at all of those flipping mining districts. That's ridiculous. But we've got submerged ore veins and ore veined cliffs. And more ore veined cliffs. And three sets of ore rich caverns. And even more submerged ore veins. Basically, it's just ore as far as the eye can see. Which is spot on. So I totally want to go and deal with that place, especially as it's a tomb world. So as a result of that, it is extremely well suitable for my owls, who are now tomb world specialists themselves. And they are actually, what's the one? The one that's 15% mineral, so they're also going to be very, very good miners. So I see no reason not to get that on immediately. One colony ship and, uh, yes indeed. We may as well have the wise owls on their way. They are industrious, that's the one. So minerals from jobs up by 15%. So they make excellent miners indeed. Though I guess I could gene mod them to also be very, very strong. But I think it's only like another 5%. So I'm happy to not do that for now. Yeah, get the wise owls into production. That ship can be ready to go in time for Cornwall to be liberated and become free. And when I say free, I mean like, you know, a subjugated vassal. But like, freer than they are right now. And other than that, yes, our fleets are currently just heading home, so they can just actually, yeah, come back to Ospra, and they need to heal up as well, spot on. Though I did notice something very, very nice indeed, which is, uh, I am now sufficiently strong that I can start eating small empires around me without bothering with a war. So, these lovely snail people over here are a moral democracy, spiritual seekers, just a couple of owls that want to be left alone. Absolutely flipping marvellous. I could give them a non-aggression pact, but I noticed if I just scroll down, they're actually willing to accept working for me without a war, which is great. And the reason for that is, even though, yeah, base is minus 50, empire population minus 5, and neutral attitude is minus 20, plus 100 from relative power. Now that makes me think, because it's minus 20 off neutral, there might well be surprisingly large empires close by to me who'd be willing to accept subjugation just because of the relative power of empires if they're actually fond of me. And a couple of empires close by are sort of fond of me, so I will just basically send that note over to them so they will say yes to that. And there we go. Those snails can keep their planet. It's just now they work for me. Spot on. So they will share some of their trade with us in exchange we expect you to defend the life, liberty and independence of the Immisarans. Honestly, that's absolutely fine. Welcome on board, lads. You see, the big one I'm interested in is the starfish. So I think the starfish and me get on pretty well. They're receptive and they're also pathetically weak. Sadly, I can't ask them right now because they're actually stuck in a war with the Sakit and I think this is the third time the Sakit have actually attacked them. So I am more than open to inviting them in. As soon as that war actually ends, we should check on that. And surprisingly, the tiles might be up for it as well, to be honest, because even though they look quite large, they are very weak next to me and my new fleet. Again, they're at war with the Rontus right now, so I can't actually ask, but they love me they're friendly, they're pathetically weak next to me, we might just be able to bring in huge swathes of the nearby galaxy right now. I mean, the Quirin Mulana are maybe as well, but they've actually been pulled into the Sakit War, so I can't ask them right now. But keep an eye on this. Look out for the peace symbol at the top. The Polismus, unfortunately, you'd think you'd be able to invite them, but no, because they're part of a federation, and federation members will never accept subjugation. So, tragically, we'll actually have to go and kick their asses one more time to get them in. So, time ticks on. It's 25 years after, yeah, the time the mid-game crisis could kick off, and I am very close to two of the potential Khan spawning locations. Makes me a little bit on the nervous Research side, to be complete. honest. Just a little bit on the nervous side. Hello, what's that over there? Ah! This is an important one. Artificial moral code. So amenities up by 5% and crime down 15%. Very, very good indeed. And I think it's time. Potentially, the Gene Warrior Army is going to be a good thing to go over to. Like, the Ultimate Towers have done an excellent job. But the Gene Warrior Army will do even better. 
And as someone actually pointed out a really interesting point that was made in the comments, potentially, because when I go to war, I'm mostly looking to subjugate someone and get them working for me, I don't really want to bomb their worlds into the ground because it just screws up their economy for bloody ages. I'd rather actually move in with less fuss. So rather than actually bombarding the planet into nothing and then sending in a small army just to occupy the place, what if I instead just invested in a massive army of extremely high quality troops in Old Solaris, that wouldn't fly, because if you hadn't actually dealt with the planetary defences by engaging in a sustained campaign of bombardment, your ground troops would just be masked, even if they were far stronger. Like, you needed a ridiculous, overwhelming advantage to win. But that seems to have gone in 2.2. These days, if you've got the numerical advantage, you tend to be able to win. You might take some losses, but you can win. It seems to be pretty much a fair fight. It's just a case of who's brought more and who's brought better troops. So yeah, if I can just train up, say, a, a thousand or two thousand strength in Gene Warrior armies, I might just be able to move around and take an occupation of planets without bothering with bombardment. At that point, the fleet is more about providing cover for the actual armies than it is for bombarding, and that's probably for the best. Ah uh, yes, one thing I can do, by the way, now the Euthonians have been taken care of, this tiny, tiny little exclave of, uh, yeah, Alderaan, this doesn't need to exist. I'm not getting anything out of this. I may as well just kind of break it down. Whoever wants it can have it, to be honest. So I'm just going to break down these here stations. This little bit of space, I don't need it. And there we go. Those have now been taken off and that space is now available. Honestly, whoever wants it can have it. So I imagine it'll be, yeah, the Shazarak. They tend to expand very, very flipping quickly indeed. Do you know what? I may as well bring this construction ship back. It's not needed over there anymore. So you may as well come over here. Just chill out in this sort of space. Also, I've just been told I'm allowed inside the borders of the Alliance of Ostiak. Does anyone remember who the Alliance of Ostiak are? Hello, who are you guys and what are you doing? Oh, you're a breakaway from the Shazarak, are you? Okay, that's interesting. You see, normally I'd assume this was primitives. That had only just started spacefaring, except... Yeah... There's colonist jobs here, so that can't possibly be the case. They settled this world, so... Okay. Where did you guys come from, precisely? Because I'm not sure who you are. I mean, hang on. Does the rest of the Shazarak actually have people working as slaves for the robots? Because I didn't realise that was a thing, if so. No, the Shazarak seem to be entirely robots. For the most part, no people there floating around at all, so... I'm not quite sure where these guys came from. They've just sprung up from somewhere, but who knows where. Ah yes, and Valkwalid, we've now got those three things we wanted spot on. So let's actually just get, yeah, uh, agriculture, agriculture, and agriculture down on the ground. Lovely. And after we're done with that, yeah, planetary capital, why not? Just need loads and loads of food uh, to offset the fact that, uh, yeah, very shortly Cornwall will be independent. But then again... I'd like this place to grow faster, please. So, uh, decision me this. Encourage some plantary growth. And also, uh, yeah, some luxury goods too. And honestly, same thing to Devon. Ah, and this brings something to my attention. I totally missed this. I just spotted this between parts. So, I can't remember exactly what tech this comes from. But I know how to planetary prospect now. So, I'm just going to potentially find a new feature on the planets, which is marvellous, I suppose. I mean, can I actually do that on the beast? And what would I find? No, you're not allowed to do it on the beast, boo. But I'll gladly do it on, say, foundation. I mean, sure. I don't know what I'll find. I'm just kind of curious now. I mean, I guess what you really want out of that is something rare, like crystal caverns or something. But I do find it kind of odd that I've got this without having to take it as an ascension perk, because mastery of nature just gives you, like, what is it? plus one to three normal districts on a planet. Whereas if this can turn up like something rare, this strikes me as way more valuable and I didn't need to actually spend an Ascension perk to get it. In fact, I've no idea where it came from. <laughs> I can't remember. I assume it's a sociology tech. Ah yes, rapid response murder is fully healed. And I do have a plan for those guys, which is uh, while I can protect my trade routes inside my own empire, you're not allowed to project defense of trade routes into neighbouring empires, even if you have the right to go into them, even if they're like your subsidiary. So, uh, technically, there is actually enough strength in Devon, enough like hangar bays and gun emplacements and whatever, to actually spread the defence all the way here to Efrov. But if I go into trade mode here, 
I'm not projecting any defense into Efrov because it doesn't belong to me. You can only actually impose trade protection on space you own. You can't project it into your subsidiaries or vassals, which strikes me as odd. Like, you really should be able to project trade defense into your vassals, but whatever. And this is why we keep having problems in this part of the world. So, what I think we ought to potentially do here is have the rapid response fleet, when it's not doing anything more important, just move backwards and forwards around this space, because... Foundation has a lot of trade, and sure we're only losing 8% of it right now, but that is still some. Probably best, as the Rapid Response Fleet is good at, you know, moving backwards and forwards very, very quickly, to just have them patrolling through this space. So here we go, we've got some very, very small problems in this part of the world, uh, so Rapid Response can simply just patrol in that sort of space. That's all absolutely fine. So you guys, here, and then patrol to here. Spot on. So they'll just go backwards and forwards doing that forever, clearing out the pirates, and they are very, very fast indeed. Lovely. So here we go. We successfully managed to prospect foundation and found some green hills. <laughs> Apparently, no one had noticed them over the past couple of centuries. There were just some hills over there and we had no clue. So that is a whole plus one or two agricultural districts. Spot on. We officially found the old Windows desktop. Marvellous. Well, honestly, I may as well do it across the entire empire just to see what shows up, really. Yeah, go on, then. In fact, I'm particularly interested with what we might find in Asprania. <laughs> because we're finding all sorts of random stuff there these days. Ooh, and there is a new tradition. And yes, we're in Harmony right now. And I think I said I did want to, yeah, probably rush to Utopian Dream for amenity usage down. That's probably the most useful. The rest of this stuff is not so great. So yeah, Demotion, Leader Lifespan. Actually, Leader Lifespan's not terrible. You know what, I'll take that first. I'll take Leader Lifespan. 20 more years, that's okay. Ah, uh, yes, and one other thing I did want to do. Right now I'm making like 800 energy a month. And that's quite a lot. Arguably more than we really need. And a lot of that's coming from trade, like nearly a thousand from trade. So, I've got an idea. Because right now, Unity is probably one of our weaker things. Yeah, we're actually at like 79 months till the next tradition. And I wouldn't mind hurrying up some of the Ascension perks just a little bit, just for now. So, let's actually go over the trade policy. I'm going to move back over to Marketplace of Ideas. So that's going to halve the amount of energy coming in off trade. So that should be about 500 down, but... Honestly, that's an awful lot of energy. And every single trade representing 0.15. So that goes up from plus 362. Change that over right there. We can change that again in a decade. And complete. I don't know what this is about to go up to. It's probably about to go up a fair bit, yes. Oh, there we go. 510. So that's now been cut from 80 months to 55. Much, much better. Ah, here we go. Prosperity managed to actually pick up some new mineral fields during its planetary survey. I think we could actually build those if we wanted to. And Prosperity has... Uh, actually, Prosperity has a giant pile of uh, planetary features we never bother clearing out. Because there was no point. Because it's already doing its job quite nicely. So yeah, Mineral Fields is worth one district. So maybe when you do the prospect, you can only get one district out of it. I guess that makes sense. I mean, it would be a bit overpowered if you could get, like, loads of new districts or specialised rare ones. And something else for rapid response murder here. If the odd pirate shows up inside my allies' territory, I see no reason not to go and help out. So, uh, yeah. You just head over here, help out these guys, you'll be back in time for tea. I mean, honestly, just like clearing out little pirate base is often worth like a thousand on its own, which is quite good. Though I'm starting to worry about what happens to the AI when, uh, yeah, you create a new subsidiary out of settling the status quo. Because I can't help but notice that the new Polismus, they don't seem to have actually built a fleet. Like the old Polismus, they've managed to rebuild a bit of a fleet, but where's the fleet for the new Polismus? I really hope the Euthonians aren't doing that too, because if so, this might be a bit of an AI bug. No, you guys are actually building... No, that's the Rontor. That's actually the Rontor right now, so they're not doing anything to help whatsoever. They're just... What are you guys even doing here? Get out of my territory! No, the new Euthonians seem to be struggling to actually build fleets as well. It might be they just don't have any money or something, because their planets aren't doing so hot, but... I kind of hope they do actually manage to find a way to build a fleet at some point, otherwise that'll be very unfortunate. And oh, that's peace. Now peace is important. 
Who's made peace with who? Oh, that's... That's just the Romans and the Yonderim. And the Romans have been humiliated. Oh, Rome. And to think I once thought you might be one of the galactic contenders. Life is not looking good for you. Ooh, and Devon has got boggy fens. The sexiest of all things. And yeah, that's worth plus one agriculture. So yeah, it looks like you don't get much out of prospecting. Someone wants to trade as well. The Binafi. And they just want to give us free minerals. I will accept those free minerals. Thank you. Why you... Ah. Oh dear. Right. What has gone on up here precisely? So, I'm guessing you just lost a tiny bit of territory to these guys, the dwarves to the north. And actually, the Elegan have lost a lot less than I was expecting them to. Because the Infinite Pond were all flipping over them. So, uh, I guess you're lucky that no one actually had the claims to enforce there. But yeah, this little kind of federation up north. One is not exactly strong. It's not nothing either. It's probably one of the big players up north right now. I mean, it's also worth noting that in a galaxy where a lot of people are now pathetically weak next to me, these guys are inferior, not pathetic. And that, I believe, is just them. So when you add in all their allies, yeah, together, they might still be able to give me a bit of a fight. But I've got no reason to have any problem with them whatsoever. We're very far away from each other. We've not got any real points of contention. Happy to live and let live. Ah, oh, but here's something I've been waiting for. The Particle Lance is done, and the Tachyon Lance becomes available immediately afterwards. <laughs> okay. Do I want to rush to that? Do I actually want to rush to that? Or would I rather... You know what, the Particle Lance is fine for now. The Particle Lance is fine for now. I wouldn't actually mind having, yeah, Black Hole Observatories and additional sensors. Sensors are good, they're useful. But then again, this would be done super fast. And my point defense is... Well, I'd say I'm only using point defense 1, but it still seems to be doing the job, quite frankly. Hmm. Sensors or... Sensors... Subspace sensors, yeah. That's fine. The Particle Lance will do for the time being. It's time for us to start planning out our battleship fleet. Alright? Let's just go over to the ship designer here, because... Uh, Oh yes, that'll flipping do the job right there. The Inspiring Bloodbath. Good name, and I do love how the avian style, yeah, battle cruiser looks. It looks awesome. Right, so, what I want to do is I'd like to actually divide my battleships up into uh, kind of two separate designs, which is I want carriers and I want heavy artillery. So let's do the carrier first. So, uh, yeah, we've got ourselves the hangar there and hangar as well. No, 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 carrier core, that's the one. And you can't have that at the back. So I may as well have some artillery at the rear right there. So this thing is purely about launching as many ships as it can as quickly as possible. With a little bit of small supporting fire to deal with any kind of counter bombers or fighters or whatever. Also, it looks like a giant shiny space knife that glows red and I love it. I've actually only got basic strike craft right now, so this will need to be upgraded, but honestly, battleships, there's only going to be a few of them floating around, so it won't be that expensive or time-consuming to do. Then, of course, we've got ourselves a giant pile of point defense, because why not? Now, what range is this thing actually going to be floating around at? If I set the actual carrier to be, yeah, using line tactics, it'll be at medium range, 50. If I tell it to stay at the back, it'll stay at 80. Honestly, 80's fine. To be honest, yeah, ship fire rate and ship weapon range up. Yeah, because 80 is fine, and then this should therefore be boosted from 80 up to 88. So, it will still be able to fire in with heavy plasma support. And then, oh, each large shield brings in another, like, seven, 800 shield power. It's lovely. We may have to have some armor on there. And yeah, of course, the important thing here is... Uh, Double afterburners. We need to get this thing speed up as fast as it'll go. Just because it'll be slowing down the rest of the fleet. And as much as I like Inspiring Bloodbath, this one's going to be the Furious Nest. Because the idea is, yeah, it's the home to a whole bunch of strike craft. So when you make us angry, the nest shows up and just a huge amount of... Okay, this would work better if we were space bees. But it kind of works for birds too in a way. But the name the Inspiring Bloodbath will remain. Because we need a hard-hitting artillery ship, including... Oh, there we go. Excuse me. I'd like to... I'd like to seem a special spinal mount, please, but whatever. 
So there we go, one particle lands and just some heavy large plasma cannons. This thing just stands at the back and just fires in ludicrously powerful artillery. And the additional power draw required by the spinal mount means, yeah, we actually have less shielding on this thing, so we'll just have more armor instead, that's fine. And with a handful of battleships added into the main fleet, just one furious nest and one inspiring bloodbath, let's get it built, spot on. Actually, I've been a bit lucky on Verlqualid. We actually found ourselves an all-rich cavern through the prospecting there. An all-rich cavern is worth, yeah, plus two rather than plus one. So that's kind of cool. Oh, and there they are, the Gene Warrior Army. Okay, now this, this is good. Ooh, synthetic thought patterns, which apparently I can just apply to literally everyone even if they're not synthetic, because that's... Okay, that's just a thing I can do, fine. But screw that business, no, 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 no. Combat training. So assault army damage and morale up. That should be done pretty quickly now, that's nice. Okay, now, with my new gene army and whatever ready to go, it's time to have a little look-see at what we need to do here. And uh, hang on, yeah, I'd actually like to do the training on the beast. I'm going to get myself, as soon as that new arcology's done, a new military academy down here. Because we've got all these buildings we don't have much to do with on the beast. I may as well turn it into a military training world. So, let's have a little look -see here. An ultimate owl assault army can do, yeah, about 2.5 to 5, thereabouts. But a gene warrior ultimate owl army can do between, like, 5 and 10. Ooh, genetically enhanced super soldiers. Okay, there's no way this can go wrong. Like, I've seen so many films with genetically enhanced super soldier programs. And they never go horribly wrong. It always works out just fine. The only other alternative is, yeah, using robots. But honestly, they're not that good. Ah, yes, there's a backup, of course. The actual Venus flytraps, who are strong. I could genetically modify them to be vastly stronger and more aggressive. Okay, now that's a bad idea. Yeah, I definitely shouldn't do that. So, these guys cost 300 minerals up front to train. Base upkeep of 3 energy. Honestly, let's just trade as many of them as we're allowed to. And the tiny little bit of space I abandoned over here has actually been claimed by the Zygmox, who are still very, very keen to expand as quickly as they can. So they've already taken Alderaan, which even though I'm not there anymore, they've kept the name, which is lovely. And looks like, yeah, they'll actually uh, beat the Shazarak over to Mazqual, assuming the Shazarak even wanted it. They haven't shown a huge amount of interest. And weirdly, they seem to be actively avoiding taking this here ring worlds, which is kind of odd. Also, how are those little primitives getting on over here? So you guys are currently in the the Steam Age. Right, so you're a little way off space. Got it. I tell you what, Steam Age is pretty close to space. Let's just get them technologically enlightened. It costs a little bit of sociology, a little bit of energy. Honestly, it's chicken feed to me. I just wouldn't mind having these guys as an independent empire. This system's worth nothing. So, screw it. We'll just let them become a new subsidiary of ours. It'll be fun. See if they're actually capable of putting together a fleet to assist us. Ah, now this is interesting. So, the tiles have decided to actually, yeah, become an associate of uh, what's left of the Polismus and this Megacorp over here. That's surprising. I really hope you guys aren't thinking of actually doing anything about that. Alright, I've spent a lot of time working on the sector of Cornwall here. Now, if I've got my maths right, then Cornwall should be... There we go. So, Cornwall at this point is now making a surplus of energy. A surplus of minerals. It's okay on alloys as well, because it doesn't really need them for anything. It's making a surplus of food, but not as much as it used to be. I've moved some farmers over into generator jobs. It's got enough consumer goods to support itself. It produces some unity, but not an amount that's going to cripple me if I actually lose it. Science is okay, but it's far from a center. It will, however, be lacking in, yeah, a handful of rare materials to keep its research labs going. But it can either shut them down or it can just buy its own. Honestly, I think it's time. I think it is time to say not goodbye to Cornwall. But it is time for Cornwall to stand on its own two feet. What a beautiful empire of snails and birds and plants and robots and Romans and other robots and different types of birds and weird squiddy face things and different weird squiddy face things and also different types of humans and Venus flytraps and all the rest of it. It's just beautiful. So, 
For the first time ever, I am actually going to... No, not that button. This button. Do not push the wrong button here. I'm going to create a vassal. It is time for you guys uh, to work for me, but also uh, to work for yourselves. Good luck, you magnificent bastards. And, uh, hang on, create vassal, name. Ooh, I get to give it a name. You know what? That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to call it Cornwall. Also, why am I choosing which of these to make into a vassal? Like, I don't want all of you to... Is this just confirming who's going to be the ruling species? Hang on, I'm going to drop a save here in case I do this horribly wrong. Okay, so, Sector Cornwall, Capital Cornwall. Name, Cornwall. And uh, I assume, yeah, why not? Let's have the ultimate owls actually running the show. Create vassal. And there we flipping go. That has indeed done its job. So now if I just actually reopen this. Now Cornwall is... Is Cornwall even there? No. Cornwall is now officially a frontier sector down over here. So I can keep an eye on it. So, okay. And if I want to... Ah, I can actually tell it to do things still. It is still showing up here. Gotcha. But now if I just actually turn off the unions map mode... It's gone a lovely minty green. And they've decided to actually, yeah, pick their own little logo here. And their little logo is uh, a couple of knives under a moon or something. Spot on. And what are you trying to warn me, by the way? Cornwall is now a subsidiary. I know. I know. It's nice. It's good. It's good that they get to work for themselves. And obviously, yeah, that means I've lost a bit of fleet capacity. And I've also lost a couple of star bases that now officially belong to these guys. And... They're not an unidentified empire. We know who they cocky are, game. And there we go. Cornwall is now independent with its own colours, its own flag. They're a criminal syndicate, of course. They don't actually change their government when they get freed. And yeah, they are peaceful, xenophile, materialist traders. Would you like a virtual tour of the office ball pit? I'd flipping love one. These guys flipping love me. Doesn't look like there's any actually like, you know, special things for, hey, we actually made you into a vassal, so you're even more likely to be fond of me. But yeah, because we're actually in agreement on everything, they flipping love us. They're going to be... They're wary. They shouldn't be wary. Why are they wary? We love them and they love us too. But yeah, their technology level is obviously equivalent. Right now, their fleet power is pathetic. I'm hoping they'll start building their own fleet as time goes by. They certainly have the capacity for it because, of course, they've got Valus. Oh, and that new unity coming in useful. We're already up to more traditions. I'm aware of the energy deficit, by the way. That's because some pirates have shown up in bloody Efroth. It's the bloody Ganvius. Like, I would really love it if they were just to sell me these two border territories. I would pay them a huge amount for them, just so I could actually lock them down and stop the trade and foundation being cut off by occasional pirate raids. Anyway, yes indeed. The greater good, which is not actually that good, weirdly enough, but uh, yeah, leads to utopian dream. We'll just go in that direction. In fact, actually, an owl is currently the ruler of the Ganvius block. That's cool. And yeah, no amount of alloys, even alloys worth tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of energy, is going to make them change their mind. They're not selling those border sectors. But if anyone from Paradox or the Stellaris team is watching this, yeah, it would actually be very, very nice indeed if you were allowed to actually be transferring trade protection into your own vassals. Otherwise, annoying stuff like this happens. Right, and everything's updated up here. So, we just need to kick these guys out of here. Energy will be fine. Minerals is low because we've lost ourselves a mining thing. But that's absolutely fine because... Uh, we can set up a new mining world uh, over here on Draku. That'll be absolutely flipping lovely. Everything else is looking fine uh, for the time being. Fleet capacity is now stretched a little bit, but that's fine because, yeah, we just lost Valor Station. I'm actually just going to rebuild the station over the black hole because uh, that was a cool station. And, yeah, we will actually be getting Black Hole Observatory pretty soon, which is quite a bit of physics, if I recall correctly. So, may as well build up that station for that as well. There we go. Rapid Response has cleared out the pirates here. And we could learn about auto cannons from them. We're probably fine, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, end of this month. That should update. We should get all our trade back in. And, uh, yeah, between Devon... Foundation, the beast, that is worth a flipping large amount. There we are. Actually, only plus 56, but we've got a good stockpile for now. So we'll be okay, and food is holding steady. Even with the loss of Cornwall, food is under control. Oh, there we go. Assault army damage and morale up very significantly there. Beautiful. 
Admin cap up by 20. Might actually make a nice little impact on technology and tradition there. And yeah, you can see there, big reduction in the amount of penalties to tradition and technology, which will actually be very, very nice indeed. Yeah, you know what? Take another 20 on top of that. And here we go. By the light of a black hole, which may or may not make sense, it is time for our new carrier to settle a brand new flipping tomb world. And in honour of Cornwall that has now been released, I can't think of anything better to name this new world than New Cornwall. So that is what it is going to be, because uh, this world is going to be, yeah, a brand new amazing mining world. It's going to be right at the centre of the Empire. So we've got our friends in Cornwall over here, and over here in Osprey itself. Just to remind us of friends now doing their own thing, we shall indeed have new Cornwall. Pretty much like, you know, right there. We can see it. We can see it from our home world. Wait, can we? We might not actually be able to. Now I think about it. Hang on, just zoom right in here. Zoom right in. There's possibly... No, we can totally see that. That's fine. We can 100% see that over there. Oh, there's the upgraded point defense. And you know what? If you flipping insist, I'll take the tachyon, Lance. Go on then. You know what? We're actually needing, yeah, even more stations. We need an extra star base that's basically nothing but anchorage at this point. So where to build it? Well, you know what? I've got all these spare alloys right now. I may as well be upgrading, yeah, Foundation can become an actual Star Fortress. That's absolutely fine over there. It feels weird to me in some way that the Beast has only a tiny station. So yeah, you know what? I think the Beast station... No, not Fens Habanis station. Get with the times. There we go. The Beast station. That can be upgraded as well. Let's actually have, you know, one of our biggest, most important, and most definitely most populous planets having a decent-sized platform around it. And if anyone's got any spare building capacity, which I think some of you actually do, we could just put down some more strongholds. I think every stronghold is worth, like, one soldier job, and every soldier job is also worth an extra four to fleet capacity. So, we've not got anything else to build on prosperity, so why not, I say? And here's something important. I sent a science ship on a little subspace jaunt just to check out what was going on in this part of the world, close by to the Freen Combine, and you guys are... You guys are cool enough to let me be here. Right, so the reason, yeah, the reason no one's taken this is just some mining drones. So you could kick those guys out if you wanted to, you just don't want to. Right, head over here. Let's just see, yeah, what's going on in this little tangle of space. Because uh, I can see why you might not necessarily want to be that close to xenophobic fallen empires. But, yeah, actually, these guys over here, the donkeys, have filled up a bit of this space around here. So, hang on, that's not... No, you're not the xenophobes, you're the xenophobes, you're the spiritualists, aren't you? Yeah, so why exactly... And what exactly do you want, by the way? Oh, you're another 5,000 energy. Well, there you go, you can have it. But yeah, back over here, why is no one taking this space? Because it looks to me like somebody is here. Because it looks like, yeah, someone owns this station because it's putting pressure on the spiritualists. So in which case, who's that? Ah, problem. It's a nebula. So we have absolutely no idea what's in it. Right, I'm going to set my fleet to evasive uh, in case there's trouble. Begin exploring this system. I want to know what's in here and sadly the only way to do that is to send my science vessel right into the middle of it. And uh, I'm guessing it's bad. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's very, very bad indeed. So you're already beginning to warp out and... Fleeing aggressors. Okay, what is it? That's just some mining drones. Uh, Don't flee. If you'd be so kind, just stay passive, actually. No, don't. Don't, don't, don't. Just stay away from them. I don't think mining drones have... No, they have no interest in attacking you if you've got no interest in attacking them. So in which case, just head down over to here, please. Continue complete. exploring. Mining drones, we might just be able to explore around regardless. I'm just kind of curious what's going on in this part of the world. And... Actually... This is nothing complete. at all. Right, well, you just actually get on with, yes, yeah, scanning this little system. Let's see what's going on here. And then head on your way and explore these two systems as well. So, yeah, it looks like just no one's ever bothered cleaning out these here mining drones. That's why no one's down in this part of the world. But this feels odd to me. In fact, you know what? I'm kind of curious. What is going on in this system? Head over there now if you'd be so kind. I just have a feeling someone's there, but who? Actually, it could be primitives. 
It could be primitives who actually began the little space empire and they've only got one system. That's possible. And the answer is no. There's nothing here. There's walled garden, which is, yeah, obviously a Gaia world we will not be taking because I'm not mad. But I will at least go and have a little looksy at it. Scanning it, I'm pretty sure, is not a crime. But why does it look like it's exerting pressure over here? They're fighting. Stop fighting. Oh, who's fighting now, Tali? And it is... Oh, no. It's the Romans are off their allies again. And these guys are just tearing them apart. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I think this might be the end for you. I'm also full up on influence right now. So I should really be putting some of that into some edicts just to clear it out. So uh, production targets for... Yeah, we are a bit low on minerals right now. Get production targets underway. Food is okay for the time being. Research grants is always welcome. Other than that... Yeah, I think we're okay, actually. I'll actually just float 500 in case we need to, like, influence some elections or something. And you know what? For only 2,000 energy, getting pop consumer goods upkeep down, that's definitely worth having. Growth I can probably do without, however. Growth is something that can kind of get away from you and cause problems. And actually, as I've lost Valus, I'm going to actually replace just one hangar bay on Ospra with a third shipyard. So we can actually train three things at once there. And hello, what tech's coming through? Ah, there's battleship hull points up. Be flipping beautiful. Citadels. I wouldn't mind having citadels, you know. That's kind of cool. Oh, and there's that admin cap up. Spot on, in which case... Ooh, leader upkeep down 10%. Ooh, a synergy forum. What is that? Ah, that's upgraded managers. Yeah, more managers. Let's have more flipping managers, because more managers is more unity and more trade goods, and that is even more flipping unity, because for me, trade is unity as well. Spot on. And there we go. Tech cost penalties are now up to only plus 37%. Tradition up to only plus 63. So over in tradition, yeah, it's like four years per tradition. So that is a lot fast. That's like double as fast as it was coming in at the beginning of this episode. So uh, fair enough. Releasing Cornwall has definitely had a positive effect there. I'm not sure whether it's worth the loss of minerals and whatnot that we have to deal with because we're definitely a lot poorer as well. Like these figures up here and looking nowhere near as good as they were at the beginning of today. But it's probably still worthwhile overall. Open up north by the spiritualists. We do actually have visibility of walled garden. So what do the super awesome special holy worlds look like uh, Yeah, in 2.2? And they are, oh, look at that. Look at that sexiness right there. So size 18, but 10 million generator districts, 10 million mining districts. But yeah, it kind of feels more sacrilegious these days. <laughs> now that you are literally going on to a walled garden, a holy world. Yep, yeah, holy world right there, considered sacred by a nearby fallen empire. Colonizing it will anger them greatly. There is high gravity here as well. Let's have a little look, see at what's actually... Oh, that's cute. Like, special stuff you need to Gaia Worlds, I assume. So, uh, a dust desert, frozen gas lake, underwater vents, tempestuous mountains, uh, rich mountains, lush jungle. Okay, it does sound lovely. It does sound absolutely flipping lovely here, that's true. Oh, and a dust desert is really nice, actually. So, moat harvesting traps, plus two. So, you can get plenty of volatile moats out of this place. Oh, okay, here we go. This is a big moment. So the Skeet have made peace and uh, no one has actually made any progress one way or the other. Now, by any chance, the Quirin Mulan or the adorable starfish people, you probably would be better off under my protection. The starfish people in particular would be better off under my protection. Oh, they don't want to. Right, what's the problem here? Ah, it's distance. The problem is distance population, base, and relative power. So that's plus 100, but it's the distance. Now, I wonder if that's being calculated off distance to me or distance versus, uh, yeah, the actual Sakit. Because if it was distance to me... No, I can't actually try and, like, buy anything off you because I don't board you. I think you can only buy things you're actually boarding with. You can't just buy things at random if someone happens to want to sell. Okay, let's actually verify that because the Quirin Mulan... Yeah, you guys will be able to... No, they don't want it either. And relative power of... Really? Only plus 42? That's surprising, to be honest. That's very, very surprising. Okay. Do I need to actually... Yeah. 
if I actually form a non-aggression pact with you, I've got no real interest in, like, invading these guys and uh, actually forcing them in, though I could just do that. I mean, I could wait for them to accept, or I could just invade. Like, how's the new army doing? The new army's up to a thousand strength here. Right, and as for the Quirimulan themselves, how well defended are your worlds just out of interest? 184. Right, so you guys aren't really big on the whole defending yourselves thing. Got it. Yeah, I'm not sure they've actually got the ability to defend themselves against us in the slightest. I think we can just move in with the new Cornwall Elite and basically tear them the hell apart. Like, I can just move from planet to planet. That won't be a problem at all. Right, so I would say deploy the fleet in their direction. We're going in. And honestly... You guys don't have much in the way of strength, do you? No, my allies could probably do this for me. Though, ooh. Okay, how strong are the actual forces of the Sakit? Because the last time I attacked these guys, they counterattacked the Valdari, which was not very nice of you. So, I could just send the murder of Ganvius down over here, just to keep an eye on them, and do not deploy rapid response, because rapid response is supposed to stay over here to deal with any pirates that emerge, because that could cause big problems for the economy. Yeah, the murder of Ganvius is going to be deployed down over here to make sure they don't counterattack. The grand murder will actually be deployed, yeah, exactly where you'd expect, over towards Devon, and the brand new army, the Cornwall Elite, they can actually be deployed afterwards. Though, hang on, is that all we're doing for now? Have we actually trained up as much as we're training? No, we've got more being trained yet. Hang on, how many more do we have queued up? Oh, we've got quite a few queued up yet. Honestly, why not? Keep them going. It's going to take us, yeah, a little while for our fleets to get into position, just to make sure we don't run into the same problem as last time. But yeah, the noteworthy thing here is the Quirimulan have no distance debuff whatsoever. Now that would suggest if I just get any one of my subsidiaries close by to the starfish, that would get rid of that debuff for me as well. So in which case, get rid of 157, they're on board. They're 100% on board. So what can I do to make you like me more? Trust is already at plus 75, which I think is pretty much maxed out actually. Yeah, Trust is already maxed out at 75, so there's no point giving them a research agreement or anything. All I need to do is get close to these little cuddle bugs, and they'll say yes. The Quirimulan, I don't know whether that'll bring me close enough. I mean, I'm already pretty bloody close. Like, you know, the Valdari... No, that's not the Valdari. The Polisma, sorry, you're the Valdari down here. The Polismas are, like, right there, though, then again, actually... There's no route here. So actually, yeah, the Polisma's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine jumps away... Yeah. Meanwhile, if I were to actually take over the Quirimulan, then hang on, how close are we at that point? The Quirimulan, there's only one way in from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, pretty much exactly the same. Got it. In which case, what if we didn't go for the Quirimulan? What if we went for the Havel over here? I mean, we could easily knock down these lads. That wouldn't be a problem in the flipping slightest. That'd be fine. Then I'd just keep one small fleet down in Eglor, purely to actually keep the Sakit from causing any trouble. The Quirimulan won't cause any trouble, because the only place they could actually attack is... Uh, actually, they could attack into the Polismus, which could cause a little bit of trouble, but honestly, I'll try and smash their fleet on the way through. They can't get into my space, because there's no chance in hell they can get past Devon Station. That's 9,000 strength right there. Then we just basically punch our way straight through to the Havel. My guys will be following around as well. Yeah, I'll just actually set to follow. That could work. Right, let's get the fleets into position. It's the Havel we want to take over. Oh, wait, hang on. The Havel don't have a border with the starfish. Bloody hell, these guys. Right, okay. In that case... Do we actually want to just attack the Sakit directly? I mean, the Sakit are the problem. Let's be honest, the Sakit have been the problem this entire flipping time. They're the ones who keep attacking the starfish and being decks. I mean, that feels like the right thing to do to me. Like, I'm not being the bad guy here. These guys are the bad guys. I mean, just look at them. That's blatantly the bad guy. And here's the fun thing about the Sakit. They actually don't seem to have many planets at all. In fact, you guys literally only have one planet. Yeah, literally that's it. They've only got one planet. 
Okay, so we just need to basically fly around knocking over their systems, take out their fleet, and then just invade Sikit Ux. And Sikit Ux is... I don't know, but it's not huge. It's not huge at all. Like, they can't possibly, possibly stand up to the ultimate gene-modded owl army. They can't possibly. Also, there's something we haven't seen for a while, a bloody anomaly. Go on then, why not? And here we go. The tiles and the Rontor are also at peace. Status quo. Yeah, looks like they might have... No, no real change whatsoever by the looks of it. In fact, no, nothing at all. Right, tiles. Tiles, tiles, tiles. By any chance, Uthonians are running the tiles these days. Now, these guys are surprisingly close to being willing to actually become subsidiaries, actually. It's only minus 41. So base minus 50, population minus 46. They consider themselves very, very large indeed. Relative power is only plus 35. Okay, so when I become a lot stronger, there's a good chance they will just be willing to actually do that. So that's nice. Oh, the Synergy Forum is done. I love the Synergy Forum and, oh, Galactic Stock Exchange. Now, trade value plus 20%. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm hardly saying no to that, obviously. And also, yeah, some additional merchant jobs and that's worth even more trade. Oh, wow. Osprania is going to be generating a ridiculous amount of trade. And already we've got more traditions coming in and there it is. Amenity usage down by 10%. Utopian dream, spot on. And now we're only, yeah, probably a handful of years off another Ascension perk. Great. Now, where's the fleet? There's, there's Murder of Ganvius. It's only a handful of jumps away. I think we're ready to do this. Right, the Sakit, you guys are a bunch of bastards. And you keep going and picking on the starfish. And if we look at the starfish, and then we look back at you, we understand that you are the bad guys, and they are the poor innocents who need to be protected. All right? So we're coming to kick your ass, and there's nothing you can do about it. So now just wait for them to say no to becoming a subsidiary. And now we will begin... Operation Save the Adorable Starfish, all right? I'm finally going to make amends for the terrible things that Tabby did once upon a time. Also, the tile claimed that they want to show up, but the last time we tried to invite them, they didn't actually bother. So I'll give them one chance, one flipping chance, all right? And we are subjugating these guys. We don't know what they're going to do, and they're going to drag in a couple of people through their defensive packs. Right, declare war. Let's just vote yes for the war. And we'll see if it immediately fails because the tiles are a bunch of bastards. And yep, it failed. Okay, we're not inviting the tiles again. You know what? I'm just going to eat the tiles at some point. They're beginning to annoy me. All right, so now we begin the attack. Obviously, we need to actually immediately cut through the territory of the Quirumulam. Which is very unfortunate because, you know what, I don't really want to do that, but we kind of don't have a choice. So we'll just swing through their territory and we may as well knock some of it down while we're passing by. And Okay, we're actually going to leave the territory and go into... No, don't do any of that. What, what was that? Don't do that. No, 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 no. Right, knock down some of their territory just because... And while you're doing that, yeah, where are their fleets, by the way? We don't have visibility at the minute. But Murder of Ganvius is coming down here to the south. And actually, the Murder of Ganvius, that should probably be the fleet you guys follow. Just make sure no one's being set to follow right now, by the way. No, no one's being set to follow for the minute. This fleet can take care of itself. Uh, yeah, I want the allies to follow the Murder of Ganvius, please. That'll be spot on. And then we've got ourselves, yeah, just some very, very small areas up here. Oh! Was that the first battleship over there? I don't know. It probably was. That looks like a battleship to me. And we've just destroyed the Kurumulan army. Honestly, they didn't really do anything to me, but oh, I'm loving this fleet. This fleet's good stuff right here. And actually, this is kind of useful. If I knock down these two outposts, then that's just more defenses for me going forward. Because the Kurumulan will not be able to effectively counterattack in any way. Now, by any chance, Cornwall, have you actually been able to raise a fleet yet? No, doesn't look like it, unfortunately. Are you guys doing okay, by the way? You guys haven't, like, gone horribly wrong or anything, right? Happiness is currently at 4%. Crime is at 22%. <laughs> okay, so as it turns out, they are completely incapable of governing themselves. Great. What's the problem here? Consumer goods has immediately run out. There's a massive food shortage. I made sure you had enough food. I checked this. Oh. Right. 
So you guys have basically entered a death spiral at this point where something ran out, which led to a fall in stability, which led to... Okay, so Cornwall's a failed state. I've basically just created a failed state inside the heart of my own empire. How's Glacier doing? Also a complete failed state. Marvellous. So if you were one of the people in the comments who was encouraging me to try and get my admin cap down by creating vassals, I hope you're very proud of yourselves, because every dead Cornish person is on your conscience. But you know what? Forget Cornwall. New Cornwall is down on the ground. Beautiful. With a half Quirimulan Ganvius chilling out with a wise owl spot on. And you have, yes, you have the right preference. Marvellous. Right, housing is going to be a problem sooner rather than later, so we may as well immediately get down one city, and then obviously we know what we want here, we need mining, so get down a mining district as well. Oh flip, we're invading Quirimulan space, and I think at the same time, the Quirimulan are trying to- No! No, why would you have done that? Did you just annihilate a colony ship with a single shot? Who gave that order? That was civilians! It wasn't a Warcraft! Okay, I may possibly be the bad guy here. Ah, here we go. We've got eyes on the Sakit fleet here. It is just, yeah, chilling out 2,200, 2,600, 5,000 total. So that will pose no difficulty for us whatsoever. Looks like they are planning to do exactly what I was expecting them to do, which was counter-invade into Polismus space. So previously they attacked the Faldari, this time they want to attack the Polismus, which is harsh because they literally don't seem to actually have any form of navy for some reason. But that's fine. If they decide to actually come down here, which it looks like they're about to do, yeah, they're about to warp over there. Basically, they'll get caught in a battle in Elgore and we'll be able to immediately catch them out of position. In fact, this is actually pretty much perfect. We're going to destroy their fleet absolutely immediately. They'll probably regenerate over at Holfax. By the time they get there, this force will be ready to intercept them. Everything will be good. In fact, here we go. Spot on timing over here. Let's watch this in action. In fact, are you coming to intercept right now? Do you genuinely want to do this? Because I wouldn't recommend it. You are going to be... They're going to be shredded at this point. In comes the fire. In comes the... Oh, there's the bombers. There's the flipping bombers coming in as well. Flipping spot on. And the other fleet's being pulled in. Yeah, it's an absolute flipping massacre. They're trying to retreat. Some of them have managed to pull it off, but there's so much damage here, they don't have time. They don't actually have time to pull out. We may have lost a handful of Corvettes there, but we are still very, very much at combat strength here. Right, guys, crack on in here. Let's start taking out what's going on down here to the south. All of these systems need to fall to us. We need to get these guys to surrender fully, because the AO seems to bug out slightly if you actually split off a little kind of subgroup. So... Probably best we actually force these guys to work for me in full, properly. Actually having the Sakit, the original empire, working for me. Ah, we've located the Quirimulan fleet here. 2,500 of them going around knocking down a handful of star bases I've already taken. So we just need to intercept them at the same time as... Hang on, who are you at this point? That is... Yeah, okay, there's about 2,200 strength there. That's 1,000 in the way of army. Let's just go around here and see if we can just mop up some of these lads nice and quick. Where are you going right now, by the way? You are... Ah, they're going to try and go to Elgore again, because they ain't too bright. Gotcha. Here we go. That Quirimulan fleet has now been captured. We will take them out nice and quickly, reclaim any territory they've already knocked over, deal with their armies at the same time, and hopefully leave them sufficiently weak they're actually unable to do the same trick again. And goodbye, you stupid losers. Oh, and good news. The Valdari have shown up these days with 5,000 fleet power. Not bad at all. Healthy little contribution there. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to lead them north. I'm just going to lead them north here, and we're just going to start knocking over some little systems uh, as, yeah, Ganvia starts moving north, and these guys uh, start moving south. Now, the question is, are the Havel going to get involved at all? Because uh, if there's any risk they will, I could just knock over these two platforms, uh, which are worth, yeah, like 3,700. Yeah, go on. I'll knock over these platforms, because once I've taken them, the Havel have basically no way of getting involved in the future. So they've fortified their border here pretty firmly. But if I just basically take that for myself, then they won't be able to 
in any way. Though actually, there's there's not much here either. Yeah, if I just take these two, they've got no way of getting into Sakit's space. I don't need to bother taking this one up here or any of the rest of it. Though, taking this one as well as this one is just safe, just in case the fleet respawns over here. Alright, the allies are now showing up. The Valdari are on the move. And that is the, hang on, are you the Ganvius over there? Yep, that's the Ganvius. 4,000 strength these days. Uh, my allies are getting stronger. I'm going to turn off Take Point. Because basically I would like these guys uh, to just head down south and mop up this bit for me if they could. Alright, so my first encounter with the Havol here. Beautiful. And was that the cruisers going out ahead? <laughs> I don't know, but thankfully it looks like they're dependent on armour. And hull without shielding, so plasma works very nicely there. No significant damage done whatsoever. That will fall immediately. Now, where's your fleet? Where's it trying to go? You're trying to... You're trying to get north. Okay, that's fine. In that case, you're pretty much trapped at this point. So, get over here. Take them out. And then once you're done with that, head up here if they've actually managed to take this system back here. Only 4,000 strength. Nothing to worry about there. There is Quirmulan of 2,000 here. They will take back... A little something, but do not deploy rapid response. Its job is to protect from pirates. Do not deploy it. All right, both of these stations are secured. Now begin. Oh, blimey. That's 300 trade I've just Research knocked out of your empire. Ho, 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 ho. I'm guessing you had a very, very valuable planet here. Oh, two of them. Two valuable planets. And you're not getting a single bit of trade out of them for the time being. Oh, and by the way, I've caught your fleet out of position. And the Quirimulan fleet at the same time. Oh, this is sexy as anything. Okay, so the 4,000 fleet has moved over here in an attempt to take back this station I'm now occupying. Except it's going to take them a while to do and they're slow. And also, hang on, what physics just got finished? Ooh, the Tachyon Lance is ready to go. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. And you know what? Let's just Tachyon again. Keep those sensors upgrading. Right, launch a pursuit. I want that fleet destroyed. Because once it's damaged, it won't be able to penetrate its own defences anymore. And their economy should just flip and collapse. I've robbed them of like 500 trade. This is marvellous. Oh, and there's the Galactic Stock Exchange as well. Oh, that's good. That Shut up, Tali. We can't really judge at this point. Yeah, get me some more... Ooh. Lead a level cap up. And lifespan up. Cost up 50%. Honestly, I can afford it. Get it done. Yeah. Asprania. This appalling, devastated tomb world. It's flipping time, alright? Let's get ourselves a galactic stock exchange down. And why have I even got mineral purification hubs here? That feels unnecessary. And we can definitely do without a single basic alloy foundry. Alright, get rid of that. Replace that with the galactic stock exchange, please. Oh, that'll do. Very much so. Oh, and once you're done with that, business management nexus. Upgrade all of them to synergy forums. Do it. Let's get more managers. Now, admittedly, every single one of these requires... Yeah, that's actually a rare crystal. How are we doing on rare crystals right now? Actually, we're already at plus three. So that's good news. We shouldn't need to buy too many more of them. Oh, and there we go. By the way, our fleet is absolutely trashed. That little army, we move so much faster than them, it's hilarious. Right, and with that done, we need to chase down the... Hang on, where'd the Quirimulan go? That was totally... Ooh, did you guys take back your own capital? Lardy flipping dar. Right, well, let's not worry about that for the time being. Instead, let's just get our fleet around here. Take all of this. Because in a perfect world, we need to take literally everything off them in order to make sure they surrender. They're already up to 71%, but yeah. Achieving the war goals and absolute acceptance, that's going to take basically full occupation to do. Oh, but Xeoman 1 has indeed been uplifted. Hang on, what are you guys technically called? You are the uh, the Beldros Corporation. Marvellous. So we've now got ourselves another subsidiary. By the way, you're now involved in a galactic war. We'll fill you in on the details later. And these guys are... Ah, they basically become exactly like us. Fine, you guys can have yourselves a migration treaty. Welcome to the Empire. Ah, yes, and we should actually have full visibility of the Sakit homeworld at this point. It is well guarded, actually. You know what? They've got flipping 1,300 garrison here, so uh, we might actually need to bombard them a little bit regardless. Only a bit, mind. Only a bit. We should still have the armies to handle this. Oh, and there's the Citadel. Loving the Citadel and improved strike craft. 
get that done. Yep, 100% get that underway. I want improved strike craft. I want advanced strike craft. I want all of it as soon as possible, please. And uh, there's what's left of the actual Sakeep fleet. Fine. Chase them down. Let's get after them, please. And rather unhelpfully, all of our subsidiaries have just decided to go home and not bother with this war. Actually, what are you guys doing instead? Oh, are you guys actually deciding you want to attack? Yeah. You guys have decided you want to actually attack the Quirimulan, who I suppose are technically involved in this war, but still, that's a little bit mean of you. They're not actually the target. Well, there go the Zikmox attacking the Quirimulan. I guess I technically can't stop you, and that probably is helping out with the war score a little bit. Okay, I know I said this was a thing I wasn't supposed to do, but I'm deploying Rapid down over here just to clean out these little systems because it's a task they are extremely well suited for. So I just want them to go here and then just basically wrap up the little southern spiny bit down here. Okay, they can be back in time to deal with any pirate threat that emerges. It will just take a long time for my massive slow-ass battlecruiser fleets to make it all the way down there. Oh, and the traditions are just piling in now. Uh, yeah, take kinship. I don't really actually need it for anything, but screw it. It'll just help us towards the next ascension. And then, yeah, just head through here. Start trying to shoot these guys down as best we can. And yeah, we're making some good fast progress here. Grand Murder, you actually head around here and just knock out all of these if you'd be so kind. Oh yes, and it's totally time for the Cornwall Elite to actually be brought in. Though, let's actually give them... A little bit of a trial run here. Let's just actually try landing on Verl Mapped over here in Gorim. Just to see how well they do. Here we go. Invasion coming in. and Be careful where you're shooting. I'm also standing here. And uh, there we go. No, don't send in the... You know what? Send in the regulars first, whatever. Fine. So the Ultimate Owls, even without gene modding, are perfectly capable of just walking all over the Quirimulan worlds. Uh, spot on. You might want to fall back, by the way, before you actually die. Though, if you do die, it actually kind of doesn't matter. There it's you go. Emancipated. Job done. Emancipated indeed. That's what we're going to call it. Marvellous. And oh my goodness. I only just noticed the naval capacity there. <laughs> Blimey, that's good news. Yeah, I've been very, very heavily investing in flipping anchorages and naval officers everywhere. So we're starting to see the benefits of that. Let's get the fleet command limits up as well. I'd like to be able to, yeah, fill all of that with three fleets if I could. Oh, and Asprania is up to 380 traits. Oh, marvellous. Just flipping marvellous. I love it. I will say the Havel have surprised me. They've actually managed to successfully take back their own property. So I'm going to deploy the Grand Murder back north, just do some mopping up over here, take Light's End, take Olam, and then head over here and just beat them up a little bit more. How are you guys doing on surrendering, by the way? Right now at minus 19. Right, so War Exhaustion plus 100, relative Navy Strength. Okay, so basically we just need to continue occupying until you're ready to quit. Got it. Clean sweep across the board should do it. Watch out for my armies, by the way. My armies are not exactly in dangerous territory right now, but more dangerous than I'd like. They're not supported at the minute. Ah, good. And rapid response has made it down to the south. So they're going to start knocking over all of this. Should be a clean sweep of the Sakit soon. And then, my starfish friends, you will be safe. And there's the improved strike craft. I love it. I absolutely love it. And exotic gas refineries. No advanced strike craft. Get it right done. This is going to be beautiful. After this war is done, we can do some major, major upgrades to my battle cruisers. Oh, and the Ganvius have headed out all by themselves to take on the Quirimulan. Who's got the tech advantage here? Because I'd assume it would be the people who are actually friends with me. And Stellaris is starting to slow down a little bit, as it sometimes does in the mid to late game. A lot of stuff's going on. And yeah, advantage Ganvius. Look at that. Those cruisers at the back just putting in the big hits. Shields, shreds on the other side. Arm is gone. They back off. Well done. The Ganvius have actually put together a decent navy there. Oh, this is nice. There's actually a Stone Age civilization going on here. Hello, lads. So how are you guys doing? You got yourselves seven hunter-gatherers and one unemployed ruler. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. He just sits there eating all of the deer. 
Happiness is at 0%. They've not got any amenities. Fine, apparently living in the Stone Age sucks. Though I'll say, for the Stone Age, that is some impressive castling right there. They have mastered fire and developed a rudimentary language. I'm gonna be honest, it looks like they're doing better than that. We're being a bit harsh on them here. Oh, and here's an important one that's finally shown up in research. Yeah, dark matter. I do have some of that. I've got various black holes in my empire, so that's a marvelously good idea. Also, climate restoration. I'm gonna be honest, that's not really a thing for us. Like, we're actually good on the apocalypse worlds. It's something we're actually uniquely qualified to do. So if anything, we want more apocalypse worlds, not less. But instead I'll take gene crops, just so growth doesn't get on top of me. We're in good shape for food right now, and yeah, actually, the economy's looking good in general. Right, Rapid Response has done its job, in which case you guys uh, head back home, back to what you were kind of supposed to be doing all along. Oh, and tragically, I am now at full capacity for the number of Ultimatal Gene Warrior armies I can create. So go on then, let's do that thing I said I probably shouldn't do, and genetically splice Super Venus flytraps. That's probably a fine idea. Now you see, the problem we've got here, as it turns out, is the Sakit are in fact resilient. So their defense armies are extremely effective. So we've had to kind of devastate their world regardless, but I think it's time for one hell of a scrap. <laughs> I'm sending in my forces, alright? We're sending them in, we're going to give them a run out. I have got the better army here, alright? Everything is 100% fine, and we are not going to devastate these guys to 100... Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> alright, so, they've got themselves a, uh, a fairly decent large number of reserves, but we are definitely kicking their asses with our gene... In fact, our gene armies have barely got involved at this point. So far, we're just sending in the old forces. Alright, so one gene army's been forced to pull back. <laughs> oh, this is... This is wonderful. This is just absolutely flippin' wonderful right here. So we'll just keep kicking their asses and just keep kicking out all of the defensive armies. Everything's lovely. But yeah, it looks like actually most of their reserves are not defensive armies. Their reserves are assault armies. Are they allowed to do that? I thought assault armies weren't allowed to be down on planets helping out anymore. Well, I guess maybe this is why Nox. It looks to me like their assault armies are collapsing in no time whatsoever. So it was looking dicey there for a second, but once we've actually cleared out the defensive forces, yeah, their assault armies are nowhere near as effective. So... Admittedly, we're kind of out of reserves too, but we do have our high-quality gene armies still present and correct, and they're now down to nothing but assault armies, who are, yeah, actually being taken out pretty quickly at this point. <laughs> this is a bit on the close side, but I think actually we've not lost too much, all things considered. I think, hopefully, most of these forces will recover rather than actually uh, dying, so this is all 100% fine. And are we actually going to... Oh, we actually did lose a gene army there. Okay, we've had to make sacrifices. We've made sacrifices, but it was worth it. Because the sacrifices we have made secure the safety and future and security of the starfish. Are you guys ready to... How are you not ready to surrender at this point? Fine, continue sending the fleet about. We'll just take some more flipping stuff off their allies. Ooh, and we've also got ourselves. Uh, yeah, there we go. Completion of Harmony. What's Harmony's completion again, by the way? Ooh, stability plus five. That's nice. That's very, very nice indeed. And, uh, okay. So, Evolution Mastery. Still not interested. To be honest, the special little kind of perks you can actually pick up, like, you know, a slightly improved version of Intelligence, they're not much better. Like, Galactic Force Projection feels like just a bit of a must. To be honest, other than that, I can do without Mastery of Nature. It's nice, but I can do without it. Yeah, I'm just going to go for Galactic Force Projection. Like, an extra 80 naval capacity and 20 fleet command limit. That's never not going to be useful. And it's also time for another election. Honestly, I'm happy for this guy to just keep ruling. So you just crack on with that. And there we go. We've finally taken enough here. Achieved the war goals. Uh, so the Sakit... You guys now work for me. Spot on. So, welcome to the red colour scheme. And there we go. You guys uh, have now been formally brought into the fold. Now, with you guys part of the Empire, that means I now have a direct border with you guys and... 
Guys, come on. What do you mean distance? The Quirabulan are not whining about distance. Well, in which case, I guess it's time for everybody to head home. And in just a moment, yeah, four months away, we've got ourselves advanced strike craft. And I think that's as high as it gets. I think three is as good as it's going to be. So that's just flipping marvellous right there. Yep, there's the black holes. Uh, spot on. And just, yeah, get the research stations up as well. Okay, now. Now we're starting to have ourselves a decent sized empire here. And I'm hoping the Sakit, because I've actually just eaten them properly, will actually rebuild their fleet. Which, yeah, for some reason, the broken away status quo empires seem to be completely incapable of doing. Possibly because they're completely failed states. Speaking of failed states, by the way, Cornwall, how are you getting on? Happiness is at 10%, which is definitely better than it was. And don't worry, we're dealing with the pirates right now. Rapid response is right there. Stability is... Again, better than it was. Bit of a rocky start for Cornwall, to be honest. And there's the advanced strike craft. Oh, flippin' love it. But here we go. Basic strike craft is 20 damage. This is up to 36. It's twice as effective. Shove that in there. And I think we can also upgrade uh, the point defense as well. Because why not, eh? Oh, that's looking good. The furious nest is now looking sexy. And the inspiring bloodbath. Even better, with the new upgraded tachyon lamps on it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. And I definitely think we can increase the number of battleships in our fleet right now. Yeah, let's get that right up to three and three. Big heavy hitters and also carriers, six battleships total. Now how much is this going to- oh, ten thousand. <laughs> ten flipping thousand. To actually go building the actual ships of the murder of Gambius. The Grand Murder, that's another 11,000. Right, well, in that case, I guess we better flipping get started. <laughs> so that's all going to be being built actually at Ospra. So we are at this point just mass producing corvettes to replace those that were destroyed. But more importantly... Down at the bottom somewhere, there's going to be some flipping... Oh, we're, we're producing a lot right now. <laughs> I should probably actually build a second overflow station. That would probably be a good idea, yes. You know what? Prosperity was never actually fully developed, and that's just sitting right there. Go on, then. I'll have a couple of shipyards uh, over at Prosperity as well. Also, did the Euthonians genuinely just declare a war? Right, they have as well. They've decided to go to war against, I assume, that's a... Yeah, that's a breakaway thing. We've seen these guys before. Tragically, I can't just invite you straight into my empire. You'd probably accept like your friends over here did. Right, well, if we can help them, we probably should, you know. We could just actually get the Euthonians. No, we can't get the Euthonians in because they're at war. And honestly, most of the firepower for this war is probably going to be provided by the Rontus. <laughs> oh, flipping dear, oh dear. You know what? No, you don't get to. And you know why I say you don't get to? Because I'm just about to close my borders to you. So have fun trying to get to this system over here. Because I don't think you flipping can. Here's the thing though. Quirimulan, we might actually be able to get in without a fight. Alright, minus 50, minus 47, minus 20. So if we could just get rid of that wary attitude, they'd be willing to do it. And the best way to get rid of the wary attitude would be, yeah, non-aggression pact. I am willing to form a non-aggression pact with you guys. You guys up for that? Let's start building some trust with you lads. Oh, Flip, you're allowed to have a galactic stock exchange on every planet. I assume that was an Empire exclusive. But it's showing up here on the beast. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that, that changes a lot. That's going to be worth a ridiculous amount to me in that case. Yeah, it's here as well. Right, everyone gets a stock exchange. Oh, we've just seen the creation of an interesting little new power block up north here. Hang on. So, 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 things are starting to shape up here. Obviously, I am dominant down in this part of the galaxy, and the tiles will probably at some point be made to serve me, as with the Quirimulan, and the starfish will be brought in to my loving care for their own protection, because they're too weak to survive by themselves, so really... I'm doing them a favour, but we will not be bombarding them. Hang on, I'm just going to check whether we need to bombard them. No, we will not need to bombard them. We will simply invade their worlds and uh, 
Hopefully not too many other people will be killed at the same time. But anyway, we're dominant down over here. We've got ourselves a decent sized federation up here that is just slowly picking territory off those around it. But I was worried that, yeah, Rome would be dominant over here. No, there's a new little alliance. Not an alliance yet, but one in waiting starting to emerge, which is Earth over here. Hello, Earth. Earth has actually entered into a defensive pact now with Reub Enterprises and the Shazarak Foundry. So, these guys over here who are, well, they've got a decent amount of territory anyway. And these guys down here who have basically eaten large parts of the old Roman Federation. Now, all of them are in decent enough shape. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be either these guys who are all in it together and are now very, very friendly with each other. Or alternatively, Yonderim, who have not been doing so well so far. They've got a Federation buddy down over here. And they've also got themselves, yeah, a friendly little group right here. So, uh, there's probably a war brewing in that part of the world. But, if Earth and the Shazarak and the Rayub were to form a federation, that could be very, very interesting indeed. And one final thing, the economy seems to be broken. Hang on, what's going on here? Uh, the actual price we're buying is... Uh, actually, the price for buying minerals is pretty low these days. As we apparently have a bit of a problem here... Uh, screw it. Get that up to 350, maybe 360. You know what? We're making plenty of money right now. Let's actually boost that to 400, just for safety. So let's just get that in right now. Do we need to sell any more? I'm just going to sell maybe five more of those, uh, just for safety. Because, yeah, that's being bought for four. Those are being sold for, like, 16. So that's absolutely fine right there. And we are making a ton right now because... Uh, I have been feeding the beast quietly in the background. The beast is up to 136 pops. A bloody rainbow of different people who are also all having sex with each other and producing the most random mishmash of... Oh, and it's become a fortress world too. <laughs> right, so I've actually built enough big fortresses on it that it's now officially a fortress world. <laughs> wasn't really what I wanted to. I feel like there's a lot more people working as artisans and metal workers than there are working as soldiers. There's literally five soldiers here, guys. You're over flipping reacting. And plenty more capacity yet. There's 147 jobs here. It's ridiculous. The beast is going to keep growing. And uh, we're actually, yeah, almost 50 years after the mid-game crisis can kick off at this point. So uh, any minute now, any flipping minute, we are growing a brand new fleet and... Uh, we're going to be potentially needing it sooner rather than later. Because at this point, if a new card shows up right here, he is only four odd jumps out from one of my own subsidiaries, which would immediately pull me into the war. Though, honestly, the Sakit would probably be sacrificed immediately. <laughs> Screw those guys. We would just try and hold Devon. We'll see if that's what we're going to be doing next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris Megacorp. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me.